sense of life is there He flows in the river Soars on the summer air His love is all around you The prince of life is there Open up your Good morning. Thanks for joining us. We're uh, in Brownsburg, Indiana today. That's uh, at our friends Jim and Barb's just outside of Indianapolis. And they have a beautiful garden. And you can see we've got moonflowers blooming here as well. We're going to bow our heads in a word of prayer. Lord, uh, we thank you for being the King of kings and Lord of lords. And that's what we're talking about this morning. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. The title of this, this talk is actually The Seventh Trumpet. And the reason why I want to talk about that, it, it's described in the book of Revelation, and it will be a pivotal moment in world history. This is when Jesus will take full authority over the entire earth for the first time. Now, some people might say, well, doesn't God control the earth now? Isn't he God, you know? Well, it's true, but the Bible says it right now. The whole world lies in the power of the evil one. And Jesus taught us to pray in the Lord's Prayer, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So right now, God's will is not being done on the earth as it is in heaven. You know, we don't have to look very far to see things happening that are not according to the will of God. That's not what we would expect to be happening in heaven. So we play a part. It's interesting because Jesus has given us the power to play a part in preparing the way for him to rule and reign. We pray thy kingdom come. He instructed us to do that. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. So we play a, an important part in this. So how does the seventh trumpet fit into this uh, final transition period? You know, we have in the book of Revelation this description in the middle of the book. Um, you look at chapters 4 through 19. You know, it's the heart of the book. It's centered around the breaking of seven seals of a scroll. You know, where, the, where Jesus comes and he is the only one worthy to open the scroll that's in God's hands, and it leads into the seven-year period. It describes the seven-year period that's associated with Christ's return, and it culminates towards the end of the seven-year period with the seventh trumpet being sounded. This is where Jesus assumes complete control over the earth for the first time since the Garden of Eden. The importance of this event cannot be overemphasized. It occurs towards the end. It's, and, it, and most of this part of the book of Revelation, it's like 16 chapters, over half of this is devoted to the seventh trumpet event. In other words, the first six and a half years or more are, are just kind of briefly gone over and, and maybe four or five chapters, but then you get to the seventh trumpet and either directly or indirectly, over half of this part of the book of Revelation is talking about the seventh trumpet. This is huge. So why is it important to know this? Well, there's hope for the future. There's a new day coming. God is going to win in the end. He will overthrow Satan and the kingdom of the Antichrist. The world will not always be polluted by sin and death. We'll be entering into a new era. Now, at best, I think we have a vague understanding 
of what this means. It's difficult for us to get our head out of this earthly realm, you know, because we're earthly beings, you know, for this time. And it's difficult for us to realize what's coming right around the corner. Jesus is about to invade this earthly realm with the kingdom of heaven. So maybe to get a better feel for this, that heaven is not just a retirement home we're going to. You know, there, there's much more going on than that. Um, when I was in college, I had a professor who invited this man to come give a talk. He was a dentist, and he had just had a very serious operation, a uh, life and death type operation. I don't remember exactly what it was. I think it might have been open heart surgery or something like that. But he came up, and uh, this is what he said. He had a near-death experience, and this is how he described it. He said, all of a sudden, I was looking down at the doctors who were working on my body. There were alarms going off. Other doctors were rushing in to help revive me. It was in this place. I was immediately made aware of a tremendous power and authority that permeated everything. And I knew that that was God. The doctors revived me, and I was thrust back into my body. You know, we don't realize the magnitude of what is right around the corner for every one of us. Now, I'm going to look at another example of a person who had a glimpse into the spiritual world. Daniel, the prophet. He was concerned about the spiritual direction uh, the nation of Israel was going there. You know, God was getting ready. He had read in the book of Jeremiah, God was getting ready to bring the people back from exile. You know, Daniel was one of the exiles in Babylon. And he was crying out to God because he looked at his people and they hadn't learned their lesson. They're still the same people. And they're going back, you know, to the land, you know, that God promised them. And according to the book of Jeremiah, you know, Daniel was reading, God's getting ready to bless them, you know. And, uh, they're not ready for that, you know. So he's crying out to God, fasting and praying. So God sends an angel to Daniel to give him an answer. Now think about who Daniel is. Daniel was one of the greatest prophets in the Old Testament. He devoted himself constantly to serving God, risked his life many times to do so. The angel himself, when he came, he spoke to Daniel, said, you are highly esteemed, you know, by the heavenly realms, God himself. From God's perspective, you are highly esteemed by God. So the angel isn't coming to Daniel to rebuke him or, or to say, thus saith the Lord, you know, you've done this. No, he's coming to give him a good message. And Daniel is highly respected. But this is how Daniel reacts to the angel. This is from Daniel 10. I, Daniel, was the only one who saw the vision. Those who were with me did not see it, but such terror overwhelmed them that they had fled and hid themselves. So I was left alone, gazing at this great vision. I had no strength left. My face turned deathly pale, and I was helpless. Then I heard the angel speaking, and as I listened to him, I fell into a deep sleep, my face to the ground. He passed out, and he went boom. A hand touched me and set me trembling on my hands and knees. So... Uh, the angel touches him, and he gets some strength. He gets on his hands and his knees, and he's trembling. And he says to him, Daniel, you who are highly esteemed, consider carefully the words I'm about to speak to you, and stand up, for I've now been sent to you. And when he said this to me, I stood up trembling. So he gets up off his hands and knees, and he's like this, standing up trembling. Then he continued, do not be afraid, Daniel. How many times <laughs> do we see in the Bible when an angel appears to someone, the first thing they say is, fear not, don't be afraid, <laughs> you know? So the angel, well, Daniel says, while he's saying this to me, I bowed with my face toward the ground and was speechless. So his head goes, boom, and he can't even talk. Then another angel touched my lips, and I opened my mouth and began to speak. The angel touches him, gives him some more strength, so he's able to speak. I said to the angel standing before me, I am overcome with anguish, because of the vision of you, my Lord, and I feel very weak. How can I, your servant, talk with you? My strength is gone, and I can hardly breathe. Again, the other angel touched me and gave me strength. Do not be afraid, you who are highly esteemed. He said, peace, be strong now, be strong. When he spoke to me, I was strengthened and said, speak, my Lord, since you have given me strength. 
And imagine this, five times the angel had to reach out to Daniel, speak to him, lift him up, just so he could listen to the angel's message. And it was a good message. And this is just an angel. And Daniel was one of the greatest prophets in the Bible. And the angel was coming to give him a good message, an encouraging message. Consider how overwhelming it will be then when the seventh trumpet is sounded. This is more than us going to some retirement home in the sky. Listen to this. This is from the book of Revelation. Then the seventh angel sounded his trumpet, and there were loud voices in heaven which said, The kingdom of the world has become the kingdom of our Lord and of his Christ, and he will reign forever and ever. Then the powers of the heavens will be shaken, and every eye will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. And I saw heaven open, and before me was a white horse whose rider is called Faithful and True. His eyes are like blazing fire, and on his head there are many crowns. The armies of heaven were following him, and on his robe and on his thigh he has this name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. This is coming. He is coming. The seventh trumpet is about to sound, probably sooner rather than later. Jesus concluded, but when these things begin to take place, straighten up, lift up your heads and rejoice, for your redemption is drawing near. Fear not. Don't be afraid. Jesus is coming. May the Lord bless us and keep us. May the Lord make his face to shine on us and be gracious to us. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon us and give us his peace. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Whenever you Just a prayer away The Prince of Life is there Open up your eyes Breathe the air The Prince of Life Is Peace will astound you. The Prince of Life.